Interpreting IR scans for experiment 11, the reduction of a nitro group. Here we're starting with a mixture of orthochloronitrobenzene and parachloronitrobenzene and reducing them in the presence of tin and conch HCl followed by sodium hydroxide to the neutral amines orthochloroanilin and parachloroanilin. So, in general, we must make assignments for the major characteristic absorption bands. And we do this by four steps. Step one is to look at the structure of the molecule so that you can identify each kind of functional group that you will find in the, in the scan. Secondly, look at a generic scan for that type of compound. And then train your eye to recognize not only the position, but also the shape of the absorption band that you'll be identifying. Thirdly, go to the assignment tables to find out what you will write down as an assignment for each main absorption band. And then finally, go ahead and do that on the scan. Step one, we want to identify what functional groups are present. And we've already discussed the reagents, the ortho and para chloronitrobenzene in the last lab. So we're just going to focus on the products ortho, chloroanilin, and parachloroanilin in this video. And looking at these, we see we have disubstituted aromatic rings. One is ortho, one is para. We have a halogen, chlorine, and of course we have the amino group. And this is a primary amine in which the nitrogen is bonded to two hydrogens and one carbon. Step two, let's examine a generic amine scan. So here I have the scan of hexanamine. It is a primary amine. It has two hydrogens bonded to the nitrogen and one alkyl group. Now for primary amines, they will have two NH stretches somewhere in the region of 3500 to 3300 wave numbers. One for the asymmetric NH stretch and then another one for the symmetric NH stretch. In the case of a secondary amine, which only has a one hydrogen on the nitrogen, it'll have a single NH stretch in this region. And of course, a tertiary amine, which has no hydrogens on the nitrogen, will have no absorption in this region. We look at our scan here. Uh, at 3,500 and 3,400 wave numbers, we have the asymmetric and symmetric NH stretches. And those are the numbers you should actually record on your scan for those absorption bands. Both primary and secondary amines that have hydrogens on the nitrogen will have a NH bend. It's an in-plane bend called a scissoring in the region of 1580 to 1650. It's a fairly broad band, although this looks broader than most. And uh, we'll see that much sharper in the aromatic amines we look at. Between 910 and 670, uh, primary and secondary amines will have an NH out of plane bend. It's a very broad, usually not a very intense band in this region, kind of reminiscent of an OH bend in this region. And of course, this would not occur in tertiary amines because there are no hydrogens to bend on nitrogen. And finally, all amines, be they tertiary, secondary, or primary, will have a C to N stretch somewhere in this region, in the case of an aromatic arene. It's between 1265 and 1340. In this particular scan, we can't even see one, but we will see one in our compounds. All right, so step three. Here's the table to get our assignments from. Again, 3500 asymmetric NH stretch, 3400 symmetric NH stretch for primary amines. Um, the NH in plane bend, the scissoring, 1650 to 1580, and then the very broad, not very intense uh, NH out of plane band between 670 and 910 are in that region. And then all amines, primary, secondary, and tertiary, will have a C to N stretch. In the case of an aromatic amine like we are using here, uh, that somewhere occurs somewhere between 1265 and 1340 wave numbers. Step four, we're going to make assignments for the absorption bands on our scan. 
and I'll walk you through it quickly here. At um, 3500 is the asymmetric NH stretch, and 3400 is the symmetric NH stretch. Now it appears in some primary means that you have an additional shoulder, it's called a shoulder, a smaller band, which is just part of this. It doesn't appear always, but sometimes it does. You should be aware of it. Here is the NH uh, in-plane bend, the scissoring, at somewhere in the region of 1580 to 1650. It appears that uh, one of the aromatic ring stretches, the 1600 band, is, is uh, overlapping it here. At uh, 1306, we can see the CN stretch, which typically is between 1265 and 1340 in an aromatic arena. It's a, I mean, it's a fairly broad band, so we can pick that out. Now, the NH outer plane bend, recall that was between 670 and 910, is this very broad, not so intense band down here. I haven't asked you to identify it, but don't confuse it with one of these halogen bands or uh, outer plane aromatic uh, bends that we're seeing here. Here is the um, second scan. This is for parachloroanilin. The same asymmetric and symmetric stretches. Notice no shoulder in this case, at least nothing that's clearly visible. Here again is the um, NH in-plane scissoring somewhere in the region of 1580 to 1650. And again, it looks like it's overlapping the, six, the aromatic ring stretch at 1600. Uh, at 1288, this looks like the uh, C to N stretch somewhere from between 1265 and 1340. And then um, the out-of-plane NH band is pretty much lost here. And so these other bands are associated with the halogen and with the paradise substitution of the aromatic ring. So you'll have three scans to interpret for this lab. You'll have pure orthochloroanilin, pure parachloroanilin, and of course your recovered product. Uh, your recovered product will contain both ortho and parachloroanilin, so expect it to be very busy in the middle and low frequency regions. The TLC might show evidence of the two products and, uh, and perhaps some reagents. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.